Go ahead and start off just by uh, certainly by thanking everybody that's been a part of this uh, this debate. I think the the city attorney, certainly city prosecutor, um, especially the members of the committee that are on the council, put a lot of work and a thought into um, into this point where we're at. I also know that a lot of community members out there uh, have have written letters and have put in a lot of input. Um, and there and there are many sides and many opinions on, on this issue. I think everyone agrees from from who I have heard that there certainly needs to be regulation. I think we all agree that regulation is the key and how we want to move forward. Um, there's three things for me that are, that are kind of important as we kind of have this discussion. Uh, the first thing is obviously we want to ensure that we're always complying with state law. I think that's the important thing, that we're following the law and doing the right thing, that we're not opening ourselves up for any sort of uh, any litigation. Um, the second thing, and, and, and something that's very important for me personally, is it's important throughout this process that we keep in mind who we're talking about. We're talking about people. We're talking about patients. And we need to ensure that, we, that, that qualified patients have access uh, to medicine. And I think that you know these patients have, have real stories. They're living with cancer. They're living with MS. Uh, many of them have uh, AIDS or HIV. I know many people that, are, that, that suffer from HIV that uh, this is the only way they can get by on any given day is through um, medicinal marijuana. And, and with a large population, particularly in Long Beach, it's certainly uh, an important issue. Um, at the same time, and I think that a lot of the people in the audience mentioned this, not all collectives or dispensaries are good neighbors. And I think that everyone in here, those of you that spoke at the podium, um, I'm sure most of you are, are, are great neighbors, but there are some that are not. And so I think that those that are not need to comply uh, with whatever regulation would put forth. And they need to be, um, and if they are a nuisance, they need to be taken care of as a nuisance um, and eliminated from the neighborhood. And I think that that's something that we all can agree with as well, that not everyone is going to be uh, a good neighbor. Um, for me, I have, I have a couple of concerns about, about the ordinance, and I think overall, there's a lot of, I think it's a good place to start, and I'll just kind of mention a few things, and then I'll, I'll pass it on. I'm sure that the other, my other colleagues will have additional comments. My biggest concern is the patient privacy issue in the current ordinance. I think it's been mentioned by many of the people that spoke. Um, I think the city attorney mentioned that the list, while it wouldn't be available to the general public, that the list would still be available to the city and city officials. I still think that's a privacy issue. I think that um, we shouldn't be asking um, the collectives to give up any names or patient names uh, to the city. That's my first issue. Um, it looks like the edible products thing may have been uh, taken care of as far as from a uh, I, I, I certainly think that having edible products is going to be is important for only for those that can only ingest it. So it sounds like that was addressed already. Uh, that's one other thing that uh, concerns me. Um, the immediate cessation for businesses, I think that's probably a little bit unreasonable. I think that uh, someone suggested a temporary permitting process. I think that would be very appropriate for uh, the current collectives that are, that are out there. And, and I also think that any any type of enforcement that happens on on these collectives needs to be an issue for our health department. And I think that to um, you know, to immediately, I think, go to our police, which do a fine job, I think probably needs to be the second step. I think that if they're being a nuisance, if they're breaking the law, or they're breaking our city code, then believe me, we'll, you know, the full force of our police department, I think, will be there to handle it. But at the end of the day, this first and foremost is a health issue, so I'd like to see our health department uh, take the lead with any type of, uh, any type of regulation um, on, on the issue. Uh, and lastly, though, I will say that I, that I do agree, though, that, that in some cases we do have an over-proliferation of certain uh, of these businesses in neighborhoods. And I think that's something that even some of, some of us that are out there that are um, in the collective business, too much of any business in any neighborhood is not good for the neighborhood. It's not, and we're not talking just about a collective, but about other, uh, many other types of forms of business. So I think that uh, there are places that are, that are inappropriate for these types of businesses. I mean, if you're talking about being next to a school or being next to a youth center, uh, these are probably not the best places for this type of business. And I know that um, not everyone may agree with that, but we're, we're, you know, we don't have full acceptance of, of this is still a very cloudy issue for a lot of people, and I think that in a lot of ways it's got to be done incrementally. And so um, ensuring that we keep these businesses, I think, away from, from, uh, from certain youth centers and, and schools, I think, is very reasonable, and I certainly would support that uh, in the ordinance. Um, the ordinance is not going to be perfect, but it's going to be a good start. And, uh, and I do have one... I have one question, and then I'll, and then I'll just I'll, I'll pass it on. And my question is to the city attorney. I was wondering if and a couple of us were talking about this earlier. 
there isn't a CUP process that's been, or a conditional use permit process that's been included in this ordinance. Is that something that we would, that we would look at for, for the collectives? I know that we do that for a lot of, a lot of businesses. I'm just curious. I'm curious about about if if that had been considered or not, and what the pros and cons would be. We could uh, initiate a CUP process, as Mr. Shannon indicated. We reviewed approximately 20 to 25 different city ordinances and county ordinances that regulate medical marijuana, and some of them do go the uh, CUP route. Um, the difficulty or or the downside, I guess, would be that. Um, in order to be approved, it would have to go through a process. It would have to go to the Planning Commission. They would then be appealed okay. to the City Council. So yeah. each of those, we would still, as part of a CUP process, impose many of the conditions or the conditions that Council would like us to impose so we could do that. So that's the positive. The downside, I guess, it would be a slower process for the collective in many situations because of having to go to the Planning Commission and the possibility of appeal to City yeah. Council. Okay, yeah, you're right. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's, that probably may not work. But um, I'll, I'll go ahead and pass. I have some other thoughts, but I'll, I'll pass for now. Thank you.